what's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video where I am going to go over the latest GGG post that has pretty much killed off all my anticipation for this league or any changes that they might make because this league is pretty much completely done for in terms of actual meaningful changes. There's going to be nothing that they're going to do in this patch or in the upcoming patches that's actually going to change anything fundamentally about the game we pretty much have to wait for 3.20 however they did include a number of actual useful changes now if you actually watched my last video i actually made the video before ggg actually were going to announce some of these additional changes and i was actually considering to myself should i release this video first or should i release the other video first and i guess i made the wrong choice because i actually thought that ggg would probably wait until wednesday or so or tuesday my time before they actually released this so it's just kind of funny how the timing of everything worked i did predict that they would probably have some of these changes into the game by the end of the week but they wouldn't be big changes at all and we are kind of right in a sense that this is ggg they're waving goodbye to us and it's kind of sad like if you actually think about it since we're all eagerly anticipating ggg's next post to find out if we have to deal with a subpar league mechanic and the loot goblin meta i actually misspelled goblins so don't mind me so a lot of people are very dissatisfied with the MF calling meta and they have a right to be like the MF calling meta is super lame. So let's actually go check it out right here. If we go to the MF calling meta, there is a services. And I'm actually not sure how popular it is. So let's go take a look at it. But here is actually a section called looking for caller, looking for MF caller. And it is actually not that popular anymore. So either the league is dying or most people have a caller themselves. The caller looking for work or maybe they're just messaging these people. And look at this. Look at all these people. Oni, Lunar, Shikari, Solaris, Touch. Can provide southbound. So look at this. Wow, people are offering some real good calling services. So kind of crazy, right? So the post has a CN next league vibe as we wait now wait for 3.20. So they pretty much said they're not going to change anything. They are still discussing that we have to wait till next league. And it kind of sucks, right? But the post does contain some nice quality of life fixes, but does nothing to fix the loot or make the league mechanic rewarding enough. So let's go straight into the heart of the discussion, which is, are they changing the MF Coley meta and what do they have to say about it? Now, next up, we have some Arch Nemesis changes that are actually very welcoming, and I actually really like some of these changes. So they're lowering the duration of Shocked Ground from Electrocuting Arch Nemesis mod from 25 seconds to 10 seconds. So this Shocked Ground gets put on after the mobs die, and I had no idea it was 25 seconds. Whoever designed the mod for it to be 25 seconds is absolutely crazy, and it makes no sense at all why an on-death effect should last 25 seconds, right? I don't really know what they were thinking when they were designing it, but... Right now, it's 10 seconds. Even 10 seconds feels a little bit too long. After you kill a mob, the mobs, how dangerous it should be, should be over. At most, like, 1 to 2 or 3 seconds after the mob dies. You shouldn't be having to deal with something that's on the ground for 25 seconds. Actually, reading about this change actually makes me so mad that they decided that it was okay for a mob to leave down some shocked ground after it dies for 25 seconds long. I had no idea it was that bad. Now... They're also removing the damage from Permafrost's cold damaging ground area. And this is actually a big buff to like petrified blood builds and any builds that suffer from no, not having that much regen. Because a lot of times you kill a mob, you literally can't go anywhere near it to loot it because the whole ground is covered by a degen. And there's not really that many ways to protect against degen in this game. The only real way is you can take Leaky Shade and you can take Soul of Aerokali. In fact, the game has gone so bad for ground DJs, I'm actually taking Soul of Aerokali and Soul of Ralakesh or Soul of Shikari most of the time. And it just feels really, really bad to have to deal with this and how the mobs are actually more dangerous after they die than while they're alive sometimes. They're also lowering the duration of Incendiary's fire damaging ground area from 4 seconds to around 3 seconds. And this is another welcome change. A lot of times you do maps, especially if you do Defile Cathedral, or Crimson Temple, a lot of times the corridors are so narrow that the whole game is pretty much covered in damage over time ground. And if you're doing Delhi or Delirium Mirror, that's even worse because Delirium also has a bunch of damage over time on the ground and uh, ground effects. Now they are increasing the cooldown of Ice Prism Arch Nemesis modifier from 5 to 10 seconds 
and the duration, however, is increased from three to five seconds. So GGG actually did some quick math in the post where they say the uptime should be a lot worse now. So it should be 60% rather than 50 or 50 percent rather than 60 percent or something like that but basically this will feel a lot better because a lot of people have phasing and once they get out of the ice prison they don't need to worry about it again for 10 seconds so this should be a big quality of life change next up they're removing the toxic and incendiary on death effects for magic monsters which feels really really good right now a lot of times you just feel like there's a bunch of green balls falling on top of your head whenever you kill some magic mobs and it just feels awful to play now, I found this uh, news article from some mainstream news site for games, and it says Path of Exile Arts Nemesis system continues to frustrate fans. So it's great to see that GGG is actually doing something to address this frustrating system. The Path of Exile Arts Nemesis system that adds hard modifiers to rare monsters in a fantasy ARPG is frustrating fans so much that they're talking about Diablo 3. I don't even know what this article is even about. What does it mean to talk about Diablo 3? Now, next up, we have Fractured Flasks, and this is kind of a weird change. So right now, if you look at Arch Nemesis mods, there's some that convert the items to Utility Flasks. So if you get Drought Bringer and then you get Empowered Elements, dropped items are Fractured. That means that you will be able to get Flasks that are Fractured. So what this means is that this should be a huge dent into the profits of people who roll Flasks. And this is a pretty big win for Wisdom Scrolls around the world as you have to ID a billion more items. I still don't know if in Softcore Trade I would ever ID Flask. I might. I guess it's very, very good in SSF because in SSF it's actually pretty hard to roll Flask. And this will make it a lot, lot easier to get good Flask. But overall, this is a kind of a step in the right direction or however it's a step that no one really asked for. But in the end, having easier to roll Flask will always feel very good because right now, the main reason why people pay such a premium for flasks or rolled flasks is because it's actually incredibly hard to roll a flask of a certain type that you want because there's so actually so many mods for flasks. Now, they're also increasing the chances for Will of Chaos and Deadly and Ultimatum aspects to drop from the relevant bosses. Now, this is pretty much, in my opinion, because no one farms these bosses. The Will of Chaos is from Delve and you have to kill the, some Vol boss to get it. And probably no one is really delving because delving kind of sucks. So they're pretty much increasing the drop rate. And Deadly End is Incursion. And since Alva is literally the worst leak mechanic in the game now in terms of drops, no one is really doing Alva Temple unless they're trying to get double corrupt or gem double corrupt. So they're probably not really killing the boss either because the boss doesn't really drop anything worthwhile. So that's why this piece is, these two pieces are probably being increased in drop rate. So this will probably allow for more people to farm Hate Forge or the Mahuzado Shield, which should be a decent improvement to the game. So first off, this disgusting meta has evolved where you need to call in a Magic Find Color in order for you to get enough loot from your map. Now, a lot of methods do revolve around the calling service, and it's kind of cool. So you can see here, this is a Color. It's 109 quant, 1013% rarity, and it can provide certain items. So they are pretty much aware of the issues related to Magic Find Culling feeling mandatory. And they are discussing the changes. I don't know why it's taking so long to discuss it, but they finally come to a conclusion that they will have to discuss it more and find out a solution. But the solution is too hard to implement in the middle of the league. And they pretty much said that they have to look at what's possible for 3.20. And maybe 3.20 will finally get some of the changes. So... In terms of the Magic Find Coin feeling mandatory, it will still have to feel mandatory for the rest of the league, unfortunately. So it kind of sucks. I know a lot of people complain that they say their build is just too powerful. So they kill all the mobs and they're pretty much unable to actually even call in one of these colors. So in order to call in one of these Magic Find colors, you have to play like a subpar build or a build that does slow damage over time. They also know... That it feels very, very bad to get a lot of quality currency or flash from killing a monster with specific Arch Nemesis modifiers. So right now, if people don't know, there's actually a cheat sheet. And I was going to go over the cheat sheet over how you can actually know what exactly an Arch Nemesis mod will have. So right here, you can see whenever you get Necromancer, you get drop quality items converted to 20 quality currency. And if you ever get Utility Flash Drought Breeder, dropped items are converted to Utility Flash. So it's super, super annoying for that. Now, 
no easy solutions, right? So they could have done some solutions. They could have snapshot a player quantum rarity when you first encounter the mob. But in the end, they don't really know what to do with it. And the biggest thing is maybe no change is better than some type of change because they could have nerfed the magic find calling meta, replaced it with nothing. And I think players would have been even more angry than before as you pretty much remove player power and actually replace it with diddly squat, right? But next up, we have the Lake of Calandra changes, and these are actually beyond disappointing. I still haven't actually done my challenges. If you actually look my thing here, most of my challenges are related to the lake, shatter the lake, conquer the lake, a trip down memory lane, overcome the lake, from the lake. So I have a bunch of challenges left where I still need to get done related to the lake, and I have pretty much been waiting for over three weeks for some meaningful changes. And it turns out that... There are some changes, but they're lackluster at best. They're planning to remove gems as a possible reward from tier 3 and 4 generic encounters in the Lake of Calandra, and they are replacing it mostly by currency chests. So I guess this is kind of good. It's definitely going to increase the ROI on the lake, increase the profit per hour. However, I think it is way too little. I think the bigger problems with the lake are how many maps you have to do before you can do a lake. I think another problem with the lake is that the past league mechanics don't really scale in terms of difficulty and rewards. So this doesn't really accomplish anything, I think, but it does make the lake slightly better to run. However, in softcore trade, you would be a fool to be running lakes for profit, even with these changes. Now, they also did another change for the breach mechanic inside of Lake of Calandra, Reflection of the Dream. So... They're reducing the open and close time of the breach and also reducing the number of monsters that spawn. So I guess currently right now, and I really haven't done that many lakes, the breach mechanic inside of the Lake of Calandra, I guess, is just grossly overpowered or something. And this might make it so that the encounter is more rewarding. However, I don't really think there is. I think GGG has pretty much pigeonholed it into pretty much thinking that there's a bad difficulty to reward scaling for the breach encounter. But I, from what I know, personally, I don't think there's any rewards. So regardless of what they do to the difficulty, the, the difficulty to reward ratio is still going to be messed up because the reward is actually just that bad. But basically, some minor band-aid fixes to the Lake of Calandra that actually does nothing for making the league mechanic actually runnable if you want to do a way of playing in the game that doesn't feel inefficient. At this point in time, we pretty much have to wait for 3.20 to see any meaningful changes. To say I was really disappointed by this latest patch, I wasn't really disappointed because I never really expected them to change anything. In fact, I was kind of afraid that they would take out the MF Coley meta completely because I mostly play Magic Find characters right now. And I was really afraid that they would remove it and replace it with nothing else so that most players would literally just be losing money in the long run. But it is nice to see that or actually, it's not really nice to see. It would have been nice to see them change loot and make it so that it's not as high variance so that loot goblins are really needed. What am I even saying? But we have to wait for 3.20 for, to see meaningful changes, and that just feels really, really bad. That pretty much means the league is completely dead at this point. I don't really think that anyone is going to be returning to play 3.19. I don't think anyone who's on the fence about leaving 3.19 after finishing the challenges or whatever build they have currently left are going to be incentivized into staying with these changes. These changes pretty much accomplish nothing besides making Arch Nemesis feel a lot better. And Arch Nemesis will feel a lot better with these changes. Ground effects are incredibly bad. The fact that Reddit is not really complaining that much about ground effects or ground degens as of yet until recently is a real testament to how badly GGG messed up the league. Instead of people complaining about ground effects and on-def effects, and other stuff like that. Everyone is up in arms about every single aspect of the game, ranging from crafting to looting to SSF not being viable anymore because of the div card drop nerfs. And it's just been a complete and horrendous shit show that's been going on. Now, one thing I'd like to mention is that Arch Nemesis seems to have been horribly implemented into the base game. I know they really felt like they worked a lot on Arch Nemesis and they wanted to implement it into the base game, but how it's been done has been nothing short of a disaster. How many times can you nerf, nerf Arch Nemesis? It's literally been nerfed probably like 8 or 9 or 10 times by now. And it was pretty much shipped horribly untested. And seeing this one thing where it says the 
on death effect was lasting for 25 seconds it makes me feel like they have no idea what it feels like to actually play the game. How could you make an on death effect actually last for 25 seconds on the ground? And hopefully in the future they learn from these mistakes. I doubt it because right now we're in a vicious cycle as a PoE player. Ship over tune. Players complain. Slight nerfs. We'll look into it next league. And hopefully next league still has a lot of players as right now trade is feeling kind of slow. I have a lot of live searches going on on the side of my game. And every single time I refresh these live searches, no one has something new. And it's just how trade feels like. And also a lot of people have mentioned that, whoa, this thing's really cheap. Well, that's why you have these things, right? Maybe this guy will sell it to me. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, exalted orbs, and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Gotta go snipe the shul. Bye.